everyone. My name is Blanche Dias and once again we're together on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about one of my pet subjects, my students. But this time the students who are ignored, marginalized and not given a chance. I'm going to talk about my beloved backbenchers. And so I have to call this video Back to Front. The other day I met a distraught young mother. She was complaining to me about her 12 year old son who was just not settling down to studies. She said even before the pandemic, when he used to go to school, he was always a backbencher and she was always called to school on some complaint or the other. She thought it would be better during these online classes, but apparently not. And she said, what am I going to do with him? What is he going to do for himself? And I calmed her down and I said, listen, give it some time, he's still young. And I quoted to her, what the late president, the former president, Abdul Kalam said. When he made a note that the best brains of the nation were to be found among the backbenchers in class. You know, teachers tend to ignore backbenchers because they're quiet and they sit at the back of the class and try to blend in with the wallpaper. But that's wrong because don't sell them short. They may be quiet, but their minds are always ticking. You may think that they are catatonic just because they're not sitting in the first bench and their hands shooting up to answer every other question or be in competition to be teacher's pet. Well, all I can say is they are dreaming with their eyes wide open. To a backbencher, the principal's office is the second home. How often have they heard it said, you're useless, you will never make anything of yourself. But you are going to be very surprised. You see, because they are written off, they are not anxious. There is no pressure to perform. And when there is no pressure, performance is always good. Besides, a backbencher may not be a bookworm, but if you take the time to look into the child, into the individual, you will realize that they are really very talented. They are good talkers, they have a lot of verve and vitality and energy and people gravitate towards them. You know, backbenchers learn a lot through observation. We all learn a lot through observation. But for them, they have the best vantage point of sitting at the back of the class. And do you know that their observation is the highest level of intelligence because they observe without evaluating or judging. That is important. You know, in class, the teacher not only ignores, but sometimes needles and taunts the child. And that is the cruelest thing you can do. The worst punishment for a backbencher is not to be asked to stand in the corridor the whole day or to sit back after school, but it is to be put in that front bench under the beady eye of a sarcastic teacher who cannot understand him at all. But in a way, I guess the teachers who ridicule and the classmates who follow suit. It may be a good thing because to face rejection and failure early on steals us 
to face the tough life that is to come. All backbenchers have terrific life experiences, learning very early on to deal with people with the way they deal with him or her. And they learn a lot. And you know what happens, what their greatest skill is apart from observation? They learn to think out of the box. And in today's competitive world, that's the ticket to success. I have had a lot of backbenchers in my classrooms over the years, and I've loved every one of them. Their attitude, cool, brash, defiant, but that's all on the exterior. Beneath that casual nonchalance, they know exactly where they are going. They are almost like the cornerstone that the builders rejected, and they will get to their place as the cornerstone soon. It may take them some time, and they may take their own pace to get there. But get there they will. And remember, the best view comes after the hardest climb. So don't sell them short. Recognize them for who they really are.